Hey guys, it's Ed, and uh, this is a pretty cool little feature that I figured out on my phone. I am using my phone to actually watch this. You want to zoom up on me? I wish I had a gimbal so I could actually crank it up so you could actually see my face, but still pretty neat feature. Let's move up just a little bit. Notice I'm standing over here. Come on. Uh -oh. oh, you get a little delay. My wireless connection probably isn't the best over here, but um, as you guys can see, it works. I uh, says I'm recording right on my phone, and um, we can uh, stop things and make things go and do all that kind of stuff. Man, it'd be awesome if we had some way we could remotely operate it so it would swing. That would be sweet. Then we'd have no need for camera then, right? So, pretty awesome. Hey guys, it's that again. Well, as you can see, I've been practicing. Um, this is what I've come up with for the cover. Not too bad. Looks like it's got some rust on it. I thought it looks pretty good. I wish it was a little darker blue, but that's all I had. I mixed every color I had together um, to create this color. And uh, of course, it is made out of this piece of plastic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what steps I did to make this ugly. So. First step was sandpaper. This seems to be a piece of, um, what is this? Pretty coarse. Um, 80 grit. Kind of wore out, but you get the idea. So we'll take this 80 grit and we'll scuff the heck out of this thing. Make sure to get the edges good because that's where it's going to wear the most. So you want to make sure you got enough paint on there. And here we want as many scratches as possible because, well, we're trying to make it ugly. So you get the idea. Okay, guys, I have thoroughly went around it. Nice and shiny, nice and dull. The next step we want to do is we want to bring over my scrap plywood here, set this someplace to dry. And throw it on there and let's make it ugly. So the first step was Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer. Uh, your brand probably doesn't matter, but um, use on heavy rusted metal for ultimate finish. Twice the rust protection. So we'll give that a little shaky wakey and um, put a little bit of that on there. Again, I'm not trying to make a run. I'm trying to make rust on plastic. So, so we will give it time to set up a little. And I'll bring you guys back. Okay guys, so what I've done is I've added about three coats of primer to this. And as you can see, it's still a little shiny. Um, but over here in the corner, if you guys can see, um, you might be able to. Ah, oh, no, you can't. But anyway, there's a little heater over here, little propane heater. I'd move it, but then it would die. And I've warmed this thing up a little bit. It's not bad down here right now. I had the salamander running, but I shut it off because, well, you can't hear nothing. So, so I've warmed that up a little bit and uh, tried to get it to... Uh, 
dry up, but I don't want it completely dry yet because I want to be able to mix that together. So get you back down there. So next step is I made a run to the hardware store and we had some choices, but not the colors I needed. We had a 2X gloss deep blue. Now the paint on this I thought was more of a royal blue. Um, they did have a cheap can of touch, touch and tone um, royal blue. And I've, uh, that's a little darker but flatter. And then I even had some uh, old Ford blue um, rolling around. And I even had a quart of, you guys probably can't see that running down the side of the can, but this, I believe, had a sticker on it that said what it was, but I believe it was called Ultra Blue Metallic. And it looked pretty dark. I remember when we painted this on a, a soapbox derby car. I'd say, let's see, I haven't taught school in over 20 years, so about 20 years ago. <laughs> and it's still good it's not much left in it but it's still good so um so what i went with first i believe was the ultra blue or the 2x blue i sprayed a little of that on here now you can see that's pretty bright So, and I'm not really trying to get a lot of coverage because you'll see what I do here in a minute. But I need some tone on there. Then I noticed that that looked way too blue. So then I went to the cheap stuff, tried some of that, and I just kind of misted that over the whole surface just to kind of tone that blue down a little bit because it was pretty, pretty blue. Okay. Then, I took, waited a little while. I'll let, I'll let you guys, uh, you wanna watch this paint dry? No? Okay, I'll bring it right back. See, it'll be second for you. It'll probably be about 10 minutes. Okay guys, it's been about 10 minutes and I've let that set up a little bit. What I've done is I've dipped a little paint out of here and I'm trying to drag some of that brown up to the top. So, and I'm adding kind of a ruffled appearance to it. Not looking too bad. So we'll leave a little more blue shiny spots coming through on this just because that's where the paint didn't peel off or rust out. this a little bit okay now we got to let it set again I better take the paint off my fingers before I get it on my new camera right okay now for the piece of a little resistance I spread a little primer around on it not much and then that gives it the pits that we're looking for. This smooths it in a little bit. Now it gets kind of artistic, maybe autistic. And then all we're doing I think I want to add a little more brown up here. 
Eat that. Whoa! Crap. That's okay. See, you can't mess up with this if you put your hand in it. That only adds more character. You can put a couple scratches in it if you want. Drag the side of the brush through it. Pull up that primer from down below. That adds character. Like it's been laid down a couple times. That's always good. Give it a couple scratches. I like it. So, we're going to let that dry up. And uh, pick a couple bristles out of it. That gives it more character too. Uh, we'll fix it down here along the edge there. That looked like crap. But that's basically what I've done to make the black plastic look yucky. So, like I said, I wish it was a little darker blue. But as you can tell, this is drying up nicely. It's flattening out. Still got a little shine to it here and there. A couple bristles stuck in it. That adds more character, I guess. But I think it looks... Let me see here. If I can turn the light on, maybe it'll look better. So, you guys see that? Where I got all the rusty, rusty spots coming through on that one. This one here well, should dry up to be about the same maybe a little uglier I probably should get that edge right there you can you know you can always just keep mucking with it till you you know get it as ugly as you want it so I think that's ugly enough so guys thanks for watching subscribing and commenting um, this was the first real how-to video that I've shot on the new camera. Now i got to go clean up. So thanks for watching, subscribing, and commenting, and we'll catch you on the next one. Okay, guys, I couldn't resist putting it on the bike and taking a look. I tell you what, it looks a lot better on the bike than it did over on the other side. Um, I mean, I got the light on it. Let's put the brighter light on it. I mean, it's slightly a different blue. I mean, you get up there and look, but it's pretty darn close. It's a little more purple in the other one, but uh, I think it looks pretty good. Probably could have used a little more rust right in there. I might be able to spray some on, put some rusty primer on it to uh, give it the effect. But a lot of it's dirt too, so how's that? Oh, look at that. Rub a little dirt on it. That could work. What do you think about that? That kind of toned it in, made it look a little more like it. So yeah what a little dirt will do for you a little dust rub that around a little bit hopefully i got enough dust to do the whole thing you know it's hard to find good dust so yeah that looks pretty darn good on there for a patina bike so again guys thanks for watching subscribing and commenting and we'll see you on the next one bye